A presenter squaring up to a judge is all very well. But what happens when Joe Public persuades an entire nation to take aim at the most powerful judge of all? It felt a bit like David and Goliath, definitely. Uh, we Realistically, I was just a guy with a computer. And it was me versus the empire of Simon Cowell. I can almost see it. That dream I'm dreaming, but By the end of the noughties, the X Factor winner bagging a Christmas number one had become as traditional as turkey and all the trimmings. But goodwill to all X Factor champions was about to run out. I was absolutely fed up with the X Factor getting the Christmas number one every single year. And so I decided that I was going to try and create uh, my own hit single and uh, to see if I could sell more than them. November 2009, and a hi-fi technician from Essex suggested that if we all stood together, we could end Simon Cowell's reign as king of the Christmas charts. He started a Facebook group urging the mass purchase of an alternative metal anthem, and support soon spread like wildfire. I remember we did a press conference the week before the final, and it got mentioned by a journalist in the press conference, and everybody was kind of like, what? What, 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 what's this campaign? Nobody kind of knew what was going on. Unbeknown to us, it was a huge campaign. Obviously, I think I'd hit a nerve somewhere. It wasn't just the odd couple of hundred people. Uh, well, it was at first, but then it went to a couple of thousand, then it went to 10,000, 100,000, half a million, <laughs> and it just kept going. Rage Against the Machine's Killing in the Name was worlds away from the usual tunes crooned by the X Factor Christmas chart toppers. And it wasn't everyone's glass of sweet sherry. Simon was very, um, it was very negative, very negative about the campaign. Uh, he called, called us all cynical and stupid. Actually, him doing that was probably one of the best parts of the campaign, because as soon as Simon publicly lambasted all of us the numbers just went through the roof we had so many people that didn't know what was going on that suddenly did know what was going on on the sunday i got a phone call at about 12 o'clock lunchtime saying congratulations you're number one i put the phone down and luckily i was sat with my mum, and i said I think for some reason something wasn't sitting right and I said, I think they've got that wrong. The charts were neck and neck, um, but they really were very, very close. About an hour later I got a phone call saying, oh my God, I'm so sorry. It's the Christmas number one for 2009, Rage Against the Machine and Killing in the Name. Joe was beaten by just 50,000 sales, but this Christmas story inspired many who learned how one man, armed with a mere PC, could fell a talent show titan even if it was just for Christmas. I think the campaign left a legacy, certainly. I think that the, uh, every year we seem to have a, you know, get this band or that band to number one, get this record to number one, and they seem to be a lot more prominent now, which is great, uh, and I think that's, that's wonderful that it's maybe inspired some people to just try it themselves. Yeah.